ABC, Matt here, back with another Vinyl Finds video, another long overdue one um, at that. Um, I'm actually going to show everything that I got from the month of April, uh, but I'm going to break it up into a couple different parts, uh, just so you don't get a you know a 30 or 40 minute long video from me. Hopefully it's just going to be broken down into some shorter clips. Uh, this first batch of records I'm going to show is going to be from the St. Louis Record Show from the beginning of April, maybe even been the last weekend of March, can't remember the exact date. That's what these are all going to be from. Got a pretty good stack uh, to show here. I'm gonna try to try to spend some time on them, um, but go through them as quick as I can too, if that makes any sense, which it doesn't. So there you go. Average price paid for these uh, was a buck seventy-eight. Uh, the April show was actually a pretty good, uh, pretty good record show. I got some really good stuff here. So let's get into them. I'll show you what I got. And the first group here, I'm gonna show. These are ones I haven't listened to. I picked these up. I may know some things about them, or I may have heard them before, just not on vinyl. Uh, so I'll try my best to kind of fill you know what these what these are. Uh, this one I haven't even cleaned yet. This is Babe Ruth, uh, self-titled. It's actually a, uh, one of their later albums. Um, this is one I, I really don't know much about. I um, heard some guys in the VC talk about uh, the group before and saw it cheap, so I thought I'd pick it up. Um, I, I think it's kind of prog, so we'll, we'll find out. Next up, another unknown for me, this is Coliseum, their live album. Um, I believe, uh, like Babe Ruth, this is just going to be some uh, prog rock. I've heard that it has some psych uh, tendencies, but I, I don't know, so we'll, uh, I'll let you guys know once I listen to it and see if I like it. Then we have Donovan uh, Barabajagal. <laughs> I, I don't know if I pronounced that right. I'm sure I butchered it. I know it's the title of uh, this opening song in here. Uh, but I grabbed this. I like Donovan a lot. And Atlantis is on this album, and I, I like that song a lot. So excited to give this a listen. I, I enjoy Donovan quite a bit. So. You have The Doors, absolutely live. I've actually heard this live album before. Uh, some of the stuff that Jim Morrison says to the crowd on here is pretty pretty crazy, pretty funny. Some of it's a little like, whoa. Would, definitely would not get away with that today. Um, so it's kind of a cool uh, Doors artifact. Really good live album. Um, yeah, this is this was a cool find. I'm glad I picked this up. And I've never heard any of Dr. John's stuff. This is Dr. John and his New Orleans congregation. This is on Ace Records. Uh, this is from like the mid 70s I want to say that this came out uh, it's apparently a compilation of some of his earlier stuff before uh, the Night Tripper and uh, some of those albums came out so really excited to give this a listen I've never heard his stuff and I really want to dive into it a little bit so this one yes Dylan's Blonde on Blonde um, yes I've heard this album um, I just have never owned it on vinyl um, the guy I went with uh, found a copy and gave it to me uh, but it's missing one of the discs so this is going to become some you know, hanging artwork or something in the room. Uh, it sucks too because this is a mono copy. Uh, the cover is really clean. The one disc that it has is really clean. So hopefully I'll find another mono copy of this. Actually, at the record show in May, I found a, a clean stereo copy for really cheap. So I do have a playable copy of this now, just not mono. So what are you gonna do? This is a pretty good example of me uh, getting kind of rushed when I'm buying at these shows. This is uh, the Gantz, Gantz Galore. I like the Gantz a lot. Uh, really nice, some like garage rock. Really nice pop rock from the 60s. Really good group. Uh, but condition-wise on this, not the best. The vinyl's pretty rough. You can see up here, I haven't cleaned it yet either. Some tape residue and things like that that I need to get off. Uh, it was super cheap. Um, it ended up being less than a buck um, after the guy cut me a deal on a kind of a bulk, bulk purchase. But it was one of those I probably should have put back. But, you know, it'll be a decent playable copy, I guess, until I can find a better copy. But, uh, yeah, the Gantz Galore. This is another album that I'm familiar with, but just have never listened to. This is Herman's Hermit's Blaze. Um, I know Mark Ditch and Bo, um, I want to say Zach, Zeke Geek, Steve Dar. A couple people showed this recently in a Facebook group. And, um, yeah, they all spoke pretty highly of it. So I'm excited to give it a listen and see if it's any different than their other stuff. But uh, this was the first time I came across a copy of this and, and picked it up for cheap. This is Jefferson Airplane Flight Log. This is actually a pretty cool compilation. This goes in chronological order of the Jefferson Airplane stuff. So it starts with Takes Off, goes into some Surrealistic Pillow, After Bathing at Baxter's kind of creation, and so on. Even gets into some of their uh, solo stuff, like Hot Tuna, or you know, kind of their offshoot uh, groups, Hot Tuna. Uh, it ends with some Jefferson Starship type stuff. So uh, this is going to be kind of a cool to see kind of the progression of their style and, and how they progress as musicians. So I thought that was a cool pickup. This is McGinnis Flint. Uh, I believe it's self-titled. Uh, yes, it's self-titled. Um, just some folk rock. I, I haven't listened to this either. I, I heard a couple clips on YouTube, but it's pretty decent from what I heard. I'm uh, ready to give it a kind of a deeper listen, but uh, yeah, for the most part, pretty unknown to me. So, McGinnis Flint. 
and lesson number two in overzealous digging at record shows. Uh, of course, mothers, uh, the Mothers of Invention freak out. A really clean cover, actually, uh, aside from some uh, kind of price sticker tearing on the front uh, right up here, but otherwise a pretty clean, clean looking copy. Pulled this out in a bulk stack and just kind of set it to the side. And when I, excuse me, and when I had some time to really look at the condition a little closer, I noticed that it only has one of the discs and it is just scratched to crap. I mean just super deep scratches. It's going to be unplayable but again this will hang up until I can find a you know cleaner vinyl or, or just a different copy so you know <laughs> rookie mistake and I should have known better. I should have checked condition but even then I probably still would have picked it up just so I could have the cover to hang or at least hold on to so uh, freak out. Yeah, yeah. This is one that I probably uh, didn't need to pick up. I know the title track and I'm not a big fan of it. Uh, this is the new vaudeville band, uh, Winchester Cathedral is the title, and that's also the, the original hit song, as they <laughs> claim on the front. Um, some kind of old-timey uh, kind of stuff, sounding stuff on here. It got popular a little bit in the mid to late 60s. Um, I don't know. I'm, I don't think I'm going to like the rest of this album, and like I said, I don't even really care for the title track that much, but it's on Fontana, and this was like 50 cents or something, so... Uh, you know, it was worth picking up and giving it a listen at least. So. Uh, this is Rejoice, self-titled. I knew this uh, from seeing it in an Endless Trip. Um, it's some just folk rock. I, I Again, I haven't had a chance to listen to it except for uh, one of the songs on YouTube I pulled up real quick. And the music, I enjoyed the music a lot, and the lyrics were kind of heavy-handed, uh, some kind of protest type stuff. But I'm okay with that. I kind of like that stuff. I like that style, and I, I don't mind the lyrics like that. Um, I think it's a cool snapshot of what was going on at that time period. So, really excited to give this a better listen. The cover, it kind of looks like Sonny and Cher, uh, but it's definitely not them. And in the back, the guy kind of reminded me of Lee Hazelwood, and again, it's definitely not him. But, uh, yeah, I'm excited to give this one a listen. In this trip, uh, they speak okay of it. It's not, they don't praise it, or but they don't bash it either. It just kind of is, yeah, it's a decent album. So, I'm excited to give that a listen. We have uh, Sam the Sham and his Pharaohs with the Sam the Sham Review. Again, I've heard some of the songs off of uh, off of this album, but I've never heard the album in whole. So I'm uh, pretty excited to give this a listen. I like Sam the Sham a lot. Some nice uh, kind of garagey type stuff. So up next we have uh, the Bob Seger system, Rambling Gambling Man. Uh, a friend that I went with gave this to me as well, so I was pretty happy about that. This is a, a later reissue. Uh, I want to say from the '80s. It's got a barcode on the back, but super clean copy. It's in shrink wrap. Um, and yeah, I've heard this digitally a lot, and I really like it, but I finally have a vinyl copy and, and need to give this a spin, so. Great, great album. If, if you've never heard this, pick it up for sure. Definitely worth worth the money on this. And some Patti Smith group. This is Wave. I haven't heard this album. Um, I'm not even real familiar with any of the songs off of this one, so. Uh, it was kind of cool to add to the Patti Smith collection. I don't have much of her stuff, but uh, yeah, I'm pretty, pretty excited to give this one a spin, too. So, I've said that about every album. And last but not least of the pile, two spins still. This is the Youngbloods Earth Music. Um, yeah, again, I'm familiar with a couple of the tracks, but not the whole album. Um, Youngbloods are fantastic. I really like their stuff, um, so I, I'm sure I'm going to like this album as well. But uh, just don't don't know enough about it to form an opinion on it yet. So I need to, need to really give it a spin and, and give it a good proper listen. All right, now to the albums that I've actually listened to and can uh, give an opinion on. First up, we have the Amboy Duke, Smearge on the Rocks, Rock Bottom, uh, the hype featuring Ted Nugent. And I know I've said it every time I've shown an Amboy Duke's uh, record, but I'm not a big fan of Ted Nugent personally, uh, you know, politically, whatever. But the guy made some great music with the Amboy Dukes. This stuff is fantastic. It's really nice blues rock with some psychedelic uh, leanings on them. Um, let's see, what is the... Yeah, the last song in side two, The Inexhaustible Quest for the Cosmic Cabbage, is a great, great track. Um, there's a short track number four on side one called Nonconformist Wildebeest Man that was really, really good. Uh, yeah, just overall a really solid album from the Amboy Dukes. I like this one a lot, and this was well worth picking up. Overall, this is definitely uh, probably the find of the day at that record show. This is Auto Salvage, self-titled. Just a fantastic, fantastic psych album. Um... This was really, really, really good. I'm super happy I came across this. This has been on my want list for a long time. I read about it in the Endless Trip when I first got the book. Um, and they really praise it, and I can see why. This is phenomenal. Really, really like this album. Uh, if you get a chance, pull this up online, give it a spin. If you can find a copy, 
Um, it used to, I think it used to go for a lot more money than it does now, um, but it, it's still a little bit pricey, but uh, definitely a fantastic album. Um, so yeah, auto salvage. Uh, up next we have Joe Bird and the Field Hippies. This is the American Metaphysical Circus. I found the uh, United States of America album uh, not too terribly long ago, and uh, this is the same same people behind that. Joe Bird was behind that album, and he's behind this one. Um, kind of along the same type of music, some really experimental kind of avant-garde psychedelic stuff, uh, a little bit of electronic um, leanings on it. Um, I think I like the United States album better than this one, uh, but it's not by much. They are really, really similar, and I, I, this is a great album as well. I've come across a copy of this before and, and passed on it stupidly, and so I picked this one up. I, I need to find a cleaner copy, but this is this played really well, and this is a fantastic, great album. Pick it up. I finally grabbed a copy of uh, the Beatles' The White Album. Uh, it's a numbered copy. Uh, ring, a little bit of ring wear, but you're going to find that on just about every White Album. Uh, but this was actually really, really clean. Um, I was digging behind a few people and they all passed on it and I picked it up. I didn't have a copy. Uh, it's in great shape too, so not much I can say about this. It's, I mean, it's seminal, absolutely amazing, um, probably my favorite Beatles album, uh, at least in the top two or three, so uh, yeah. Another one I've been looking for for a while, this is Canned Heat uh, with John Lee Hooker, Hooker and Heat. Uh, some condition issues on this one, it didn't play through uh, real quiet, you know, there was some definitely cracks and pops on it. but. Uh, when the tracks got a little bit louder, it, was, it played okay. Um, and even the quiet moments came through enough to make this a really enjoyable listen. Uh, there's a couple spots where they bring in uh, one of the group members, Alan, something, I cannot think of his last name, it doesn't matter. Uh, I'm drawing a blank, but uh, he plays the harmonica. They bring him in to play on a couple of tracks, and after the first song, John Lee Hooker stops, and he's like, oh man, I really dig this Alan guy. You know, I don't know how he's following me, but he's following me. So it was kind of cool to hear that banter with Hooker and, and the band and the producers, so... Uh, just a, yeah, really great blues album. It was super long though. This album is really, really long. Two LPs. Um, it, it took up uh, an afternoon listening to this, but it was worth it. So. Then we have Fever Tree, their self-titled album, uh, including the big song San Francisco Girls. Fantastic track. Fever Tree, uh, group out of San Francisco, a psychedelic group. Um, a little bit harder, um, but no, I really, really like these guys. I've got uh, their for sale album, I believe I have already, and, and wanted this for a while. So, so good. And this is Fever Tree. Their stuff's pretty affordable, uh, but it's super good music. If you can uh, track down their albums, they're worth picking up for sure. This holds a uh, place in my collection as the weirdest album that I own now. Uh, this is The Hellers, Singers, Talkers, Players, Swingers, and Doers. The Hellers apparently were a bunch of, uh, well, I don't know if they were a family or just a couple of guys that uh, were into advertising, wrote some jingles and commercials and, and things like that. And they were approached to make an album, and this is that album that they made. Super experimental, super avant-garde, super weird, but really enjoyable too. I don't know, I really liked this. It, it just it hit that weird note for me that uh, took it from just being bad weird to like... I, I don't know, I don't even know how to explain it. Um, some nice psychedelic moments on here actually. Um, and it's just overall weird. They have different moments where there's, uh, you know, music playing that almost sounds like uh, elevator type music, music, and then it'll be interspersed with some like television ad clips, uh, weird voiceovers, children music, children talking. Um, gosh, I don't know. It's just the weirdest thing. But uh, <laughs> you know, if you're in, if you want to get a little trippy some night. Uh, put this on, um, and this is a super clean copy of this, by the way. I actually thought it was a reissue, but it's it's an original on uh, ABC Command. So, um, yeah, pull this up on YouTube and give it give it a listen. It's it's weird. This one, I don't know how I got lucky enough to grab this one. There's a, a vendor that always gets picked over by dealers before the show starts. Um, this was no exception. His crates got plundered, but I always look through it and try to find some stuff that people may have passed on for some reason. And this was still in there. This is Helen Wolf, uh, the Helen Wolf album. This is an original copy. It's phenomenal condition. No seam splits. The vinyl's super nice. Uh, there's a punch hole in the middle. But my gosh, this was a fantastic find. I, I, I really don't know how these guys passed up that album, but uh, I got lucky and uh, and grabbed myself a copy. And yeah, well, well worth it. I have a stereo copy of this album. This is Jefferson Airplane's A Realistic Pillow. Uh, but my stereo copy is pretty rough, and this was a mono copy, and it was super clean. So I grabbed this uh, pretty quickly. 
I know a lot of people think the mono mix has a little bit more punch to it than the stereo mix does, so I'm excited to give kind of both a back-to-back -back listen and see what I like better. BB King, live at the Cook County Jail. This is another album that can be found pretty cheap, and, and I found it pretty cheap as well. But this is another great live album, uh, kind of along the lines of like a Johnny Cash at uh, Folsom Prison or San Quentin or something like that. Uh, the crowd's really into it, really, really noisy and loud and cheering him on and, and booing some of the prison people. So that's always fun to hear. And then uh, just some great blues guitar work by B.B. King on this album. Just, yeah, I'm a, I'm a pretty big B.B. King fan. I try to pick up any albums I find by him. And the, the, benef you know, the bonus is that they're all pretty cheap, so... Kink stuff is so hard to find for me. It's usually really expensive where I just don't see it. And I found this really cheap. This is uh, the Kinks Kink Size. This is a mono copy. Um, again, not in the best shape cover wise, but the vinyl was actually pretty nice. And thanks to the mono switch from uh, Chris over at Dixieland Farm, uh, this played through really, really well. Um, Tired of Waiting for You is on here all day and all of the night. Uh, their cover of Louie Louie. Just a fantastic album. I really like this one. This is a little bit later reissue. This is uh, John Mayall with Eric Clapton, the Blues Breakers album. Uh, really, really nice clean copy of this though. And this was like, I found this for a buck, I think. So, um, yeah, I don't know what else to say about this album either. It's one of those that uh, if you're not familiar with it, you need to be. Uh, this is just one of those albums that everybody always raves about and deservedly so. Next is the McCoys. This is uh, Human Ball. Uh, known, of course, for their album and their song Hang On Sloopy, which was a little more kind of a garage-y, kind of frat rock type stuff. Um, this is a lot more straight, just blues rock, some psychedelic tendencies on some of the tracks. Uh, just kind of a complete 180 from, uh, from Hang On Sloopy. Much, much different. Rick Derringer, of course, was in the group. Uh, build here and on, on most of their albums is Rick Zeringer, I believe. Uh, but his guitar work on some of these songs is phenomenal. Great blues guitarist. Um, and this is this is a really, really good album. I like this a lot. There were a couple of tracks that reminded me of their kind of hang on sloopy sound that where they get a little more, not poppy, but it's not uh, so much psychedelic. It's just kind of that kind of hard driving rock. But uh, yeah, I enjoyed this album a lot. I think, I think this can be found pretty cheap too. So um, this is definitely worth giving a spin if you come across it. This was a blind buy for me. Uh, this is uh, Billy Mitchell, Might Be Hope. Um, I bought it, I mean, it's a promo copy, white label. Looks really cool, right? I mean, it looks kind of psychedelic or at least blues rocky. Um, this was the most like hit and miss, just thrown together album I think I've heard in a while. Um, starts off with kind of a blues rock song called Walk, it's okay. And then the second song is called Electronic Dance and it's really great. Uh, has a nice little freak out in the middle of it. Uh, kind of a longer track. That was probably the best track on the album. And then it goes into uh, Bullfrog Blues, which is just a stripped down kind of raw blues song, which was good on its own, but just felt out of place after the Freak Out song. And then it ends on Side One with Might Be Hope, which is just some kind of middle of the road blues rock, which is okay. Side Two opens with back a cover of Backdoor Man, which I really enjoyed. I thought he did a good job with the cover. And then Waterfall Walk and Willoughby Grove are the next two tracks. They're super slowed down, like soft rock. And then it ends with Guess I'll Pack My Bag, um, which is like almost a seven minute long song um, that had some blues rock tendencies to it, but was kind of slowed down and just, it, this did not do it for me. This I'm glad I found this cheap and didn't spend a whole lot on this. Uh, electronic Dance is definitely worth seeking out and the cover of Backdoor Man I would recommend too, but overall you can skip the album. Um, yeah, what do you, you know, hit and miss. And, you know, took a chance and it didn't pay off, but it's it's okay. This is one I've been looking for for a while, too. Uh, this is Pigeon, their self-titled album, with one of the grossest, uh, <laughs> weirdest covers ever. Um, but no, I, I actually enjoyed this okay. Uh, some psych leanings, uh, some horns thrown in, and I know Bo's not a big fan of it, but uh, I didn't think it was bad, but it, it's not great either. It's definitely not one that you need to pay a whole lot for, but if you can find it cheap, I think it's worth picking up just to give it a spin. And, and to have for the cover so this uh is a group called taos i believe i'm pronouncing that right self-titled album named after a town in arizona where they were from um looks like some country rock and that's exactly what it is it's some kind of laid back uh, hippie country rock which is not bad i actually enjoyed this album a lot uh, really kind of had a laid back feel to it um yeah I, this is from in the endless trip as well they give it a fairly positive review and, and i do too i actually if you like country rock, I think this is definitely worth seeking out. Um, I'm trying to think of anybody to compare them to. I mean, of course, 
you know, like the Flying Burrito Brothers or somebody like that. Not not quite on that level, not as good as that, uh, but has that kind of a feel to it. So, Last but not least uh, from the record show, this is the Walker Brothers, introducing the Walker Brothers. Just a really nice Baroque pop album. Uh, I, I'm a big, big fan of the Walker Brothers, and this album is so good. Uh, from start to finish, I don't, I don't think there's a bad track on it. Um, they do a nice cover of uh, The Land of a Thousand Dances on here. Um, doing the Jerk, Dancing in the Street, uh, Love Minus Zero, uh, Here Comes the Night, You're All Around Me. Just a oh, really, really good album. I loved this album. This is going to get a lot of play here. So yeah, that's everything I found at the record show. Uh, be sure to keep an eye on the feed. Uh, I'm going to post a couple other videos from April, some thrift store finds and record store finds. Uh, they won't be nearly as long as this video was, but I appreciate you guys sticking around. Uh, leave me a comment. Um, yeah, just let me know what you think of any of the albums. If you know some that I'm not familiar with, or if uh, you, you have any of the other ones I have too, I'd like to hear some comments and see what you guys think of them. So appreciate you stopping by, and we'll talk to you soon. See you guys.